Good evening, everybody. This is Death Adder at the Death Shop, and we're going to do another episode of Cook to Death. <laughs> ah, yeah. I don't think it quite needs that much emphasis. Uh, tonight, uh, yeah, Heather isn't going to come home till 11.30, and ooh! I set my oven to 425. You're probably going to see me a little bit of mess here, so pardon me for the mess, guys. But tonight, we are doing... Oh, king crab legs. Only got a couple of them. This is just for me because uh, I buy these every time that they're on sale. And uh, I usually eat them with Doug because Heather doesn't like crab. Let me go ahead and pick this back up for a second so you can get a better look. It's got a couple there. You see the end of that one kind of got a little piece torn off. But I only want a couple tonight because, yeah, I don't eat a ton. And at the same time, uh, I've got some rice and stuff to go with them, so I'm going to make something good. So, the first thing you want to do with these is, uh, I've got one of my dome lights there, how's that? Uh, is rinse off, uh, there should be fully cooked and individually quick frozen. Boy, let me see if I can say that right. Individually quick frozen. So, <laughs> so you want to rinse all the, the uh, ice glazing off. And if they don't come ice glazed, I probably would not suggest eating them. Because that's bad. So it's your oven to 425, and you can barely see over the top there. You see I got my, this is my uh, bacon drippings for, uh, usually for uh, enchiladas. Might do one of those sometime in the future. I make uh, old style homemade Spanish enchiladas. So no red sauce, no green sauce. I just dropped a bunch of Old Bay seasoning on these guys. When you season them, make sure you season them on both sides. If you want lemon, you can throw a lemon in there. I'm not throwing lemon in tonight. I did throw in a bunch of granulated garlic, which you should be able to pick up at any store. I probably got mine from Winco or Huckleberries, one of the two. And then uh, all you want to do is, uh, I don't have any of the wrappers <laughs> like I normally do, but uh, you want to put a tent over the top. And I know I do have a bunch of these. Uh, slow cooker liners are in there, so I'm going to go back to my second pantry, which isn't really a pantry at all. Oops. There goes my blue solo cups, which I hardly ever use for anything. But this is what I went for here. Reynolds wrappers. I really love these things, by the way. Make a great tent. So now I'm really gonna do is I wrap these puppies up and then throw this in 425, 20 minutes. Should make me nice crab legs. You'll know when they're warm. I mean, it's pretty easy. Anyway, I will catch you later when my crab legs are done. So, all right, everybody, I am back. And I decided that my rice, instead of doing something weird or crazy with it, because I mean I do have saffron, I could make saffron rice, but it's already cooked, so I decided we're going to make some fried rice to go with the crab, which is kind of a little weird. <laughs> Might seem a little weird, but eh, whatever. So I've got a couple strips of bacon that are in a pan. Put it on four. Four. Because uh, if you put it too high, you'll splatter. And then of course here's the cooked rice. Heather cooked a basmati rice, so uh, so I usually prefer jasmine, but we're going to invite that, some green onion, and an egg to the party. We're going to make some fried rice out of this, but first got to get this cooking. Got nine minutes to do this in, so hopefully we can get it. This is going to take a little while to cook anyway. Maybe I should turn the heat up just a little bit. If you do do that, make sure you turn it back down, otherwise this stuff's going to pop like crazy on you. And Bacon is notorious for wanting to just knock your face in. Let's see if I have a... I actually do have my big metal spoon, so I can get this cooking with no problem. Sometimes we cook bacon in the oven too, but if you do that, you don't get this nice little thing of bacon drippings here, which you get to use for your uh, enchiladas. In fact, I think what I'll do right now, since I'm right here looking at it, 
and cover this puppy back up. Pepper meal. Uh, the only reason is because there are some, uh, it is summertime, so you know, you start getting all the flies and stuff. I do uh, use grub control on my lawn, so hoping to uh, keep them out, mostly mosquitoes. All right, now that I hear it sizzling, I'm gonna back this off just a bit. It's nothing in the pan. You wanna chop it about equal, so that way it'll all fry at the same rate. I'm gonna try and get this kind of crispy if possible before I throw the rice in, because once I throw the rice in, everything's gonna cool way down. Say so if you want, uh, you know, if you're doing oriental fried rice, you can like degrease or uh, deglaze the pan with some mirin after the bacon all cooks, but we're not gonna do that today. In fact, I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna come over here and I'll measure out eh, roughly a cup. It's not gonna be a uh, specific, you know. I'm not uh, I'm not a super measure type person when it comes to this. So I make sure that I got to. Uh, about the right amount to cover what I'm using here. I only did one scallion, and I do all except for the very ends with the scallions, because yeah, they're, they're usually all dry and never that great. The spoon decided not to cooperate with me, but you know, that happens more often than you think. Just breaking up this rice because it's all in a clump. I'll fish my spoon out here in a second. The thing you wanna make sure you do though is uh, make sure that you don't get any water into your pan here because this will splatter like crazy. And I need to put my bowl of rice back in there. I'm not gonna eat the whole bowl. It's more like uh, two and a half cups of it in there, so that's way too much for this. As you can see, this is why I say you could use something to deglaze the pan because it tends to get stuck here. Especially since I'm using uh, applewood smoked bacon. So it comes not only with the applewood flavoring, you know, but the smoke flavoring too. So it tends to get a little on the crazy side here. Put some wrapper back on my rice here. Probably should transfer it down. I think I will actually transfer it down to a smaller remember is when you multitask in the kitchen, your food's always going to cook faster if you don't watch it. And I know I'm taking a little risk here with the metal spoon resting on the, uh, resting in the uh, actual thing itself. Well, you know what? I am not due to go back to work until Sunday. I took Saturday off because I was supposed to put Doug's computer together, but we did that last weekend and, uh, well, yeah, it didn't work out quite as we planned because, uh, because he got a newer board than processor and it kind of messed with the whole system. Since he got the newer, or the newer processor, I mean, than the board. So uh, he wasn't able to get his BIOS to even come up. Which kind of sucks because now he's got to get a loaner chip to do that and we're going to have to take his new chip out, put the loaner chip in, and I'm starting to smell old bay and there's five minutes left so you know it's getting close. So anyway, on with Doug's story. Okay, so we had to go there and do his, uh, we're going to have to take his processor out, his brand new one on the brand new board, put it uh, put a loaner chip in, download the BIOS so it can run his chip, send the loaner by or send the loaner uh, CPU back and put his back in with the new flash BIOS, which really kind of sucks. But aside from having somebody else do it in a computer shop and charging him an arm and a leg, that's the best way to do it. So we'll bring it back to me. Here's the thing too, I do not mind dirty. Uh, I do not mind dirty uh, rice because I'm going to have dirty rice here because of the stuff that's on the bottom. And I decided too that since uh, yeah we're doing that, 
Got a little uh, Roussanne from Bonsu Cellars down in Walla Walla, Washington. You always want to take this off the heat when you're deglazing a pan because if you do not, you will ignite that pan. There's still a splash left or something else. It was okay wine, but not super great, so I'd rather cook with it. And this is a great way to give some extra flavor to your fried rice. That's about how much fried rice I want in there. We'll do that. Go ahead and add our scallion that we chopped up earlier. Oh, I almost got that broke up right. That basmati. Like I said, this is going to make a mess. I'm starting to smell that crab now. I really smell that old bay seasoning, so I know I got it. I just was supposed to eat these on like Tuesday. Didn't feel like cooking. Uh, didn't feel like cooking uh, some uh, some of this stuff too. The other thing that I do add to it is I always add a little bit of salt because even though bacon's got salt, it's never going to be enough with the rice. And I'm adding an egg too anyway. A little bit of the granulated garlic from earlier. And as you can see, I didn't quite get all the glaze off the bottom with it, but that's fine. Don't care as long as it doesn't burn. I just want to get this a little bit crispy and I'm starting to get stuff on my shirt. Say thank Doug for the shirt. Belmont Clan Vampire Killers. Let's see if we get can get that in the picture. And since this is going to be boring for a second, I'm probably going to have to pull the crab for in a second. I'm going to go ahead and uh, switch off here. We'll be right back. Okay guys, so I uh, checked on my crabbies. They're doing fine. What you do for those is you just go there and, and uh, check to make sure that they're warm. And if they're warm, then you know that they're good to go. So I turned the oven off on them. I'm going to leave them in for just a second because I want to eat them when they're hot. There we go. There's some of that glazing getting off on the rice now that the rice is actually frying to the uh, bottom of the pan, which is nice. I like mine semi-crispy. So that's lovely to see. And now we're going to invite our friend to the party. Now that we've got some of this. Pull an egg. Let's bring the spoon back here, do a light little scramble on it. This is a uh, quite a bit on the uh, On the surface factor, so this egg should cook rather fast. I just like keeping it out because, of course, you want to cook the egg thoroughly. Like I said, I don't care if a little bit sticks to it. I'm expecting it to because of that uh, deglaze didn't deglaze it all the way. It's still going to be lovely. Now, at this point, you know, some people might throw their... Uh, soy sauce or what have you in. Not a huge fan of the soy on the rice, you know, fried rice. On mine, I could take a little bit every once in a while. I'm not gonna do it today, that's why I added the extra salt. And what you can do too, is if you wanna make sure that all that uh, extra, extra egg cooks on there, what you can do is you can throw a lid on this. Super mega easy. So I'm gonna go ahead and take my friends out now. And we'll see what I do have for the lids here. Do I have the right lid? No, that's too cheap. I know I have the right lid for this. Mm. Yeah, that'll do. It's a little small, but it'll right work. Basically what I'm getting it to do is steam those eggs so the eggs cook thoroughly. I'm not really scared about salmonella or nothing like that. Not really.
And not only that, I don't like the flavor of burnt eggs and neither should anybody else. Stand back when you open your oven because that heat's going to come pouring out. Oh, and I can tell these guys are done because they're smelling so good. Smell good. It's a good smell. And I don't have a 100% clean kitchen here, I'm sorry. What? i give you a little go here real quick. Uh, actually, let me toss the, toss the rice around a little bit. So you can see, boom. It's starting to speckle. And it starts popping like that and you see your eggs are all fluffy. Yeah, that's done too. Let's move that off the heat. Turn this off. All the splatter, you can see that was freshly cleaned when I started. But all the splatter from, just from cooking this. We'll take you over here real quick. There's our friends. You can see them steaming. Those guys are done. So I plate all this up and then uh, cook up some butter. Now in case you're wondering, it's only about an eighth of an inch here. And I got a turkey basting pan that I got this puppy in. So, so this is real easy. Just threw that Old Bay seasoning on there. You can still see it in the bottom of the pan there. A little Old Bay. A little, uh, a little salt, of course, in the water itself because... It, yeah, it's better to do seawater. Keep that flavor in there. And uh, a little bit of garlic. And you can do lemon if you want. I didn't tonight, though. Piece of cake, 425. About 20 minutes. You'll know when they feel warm. They're still super hot, so we're good. Be back for the eating. All right, guys. And I'm not sure if you're going to get me or not in this. But uh, anyway, got our crab. Yeah. Got our fried rice, which I'm going to dig into right now. <laughs> it's hot but it's really good okay and I just made uh, some uh, butter real easy one ramekin if it's already soft 20 seconds in your microwave just make sure you cover it wet paper towel dampen the paper towel squeeze it out put it over the top that way if anything comes up and out it's real easy to clean up and that way you don't get butter all over your microwave if you do it too long if it's cold, usually about 30 seconds works, but you can tell. It looks about like that. It's ready to rock and roll. Utility fork. This puppy uh, is just a fork from an old set. <laughs> I, I, and the reason why we uh, pull out the utility fork is so we can do stuff like this when we crack into the crab. Sometimes it's really easy. Sometimes it's not. <laughs> and sometimes you get good pieces and sometimes you don't. It's just uh, that's how it goes with them depends on how good the crab exercise and if you're lucky you get good pieces like this so we're going to take a piece of crab and you want to make sure that you pull it from the side because you want to get those out those are not good eats on any way shape or form i usually like to take the fat off because fat's generally not that great of an eat either on the crab besides the the, the uh tastiness is going to come from your uh from your dip over here I can smell that old bay on there. You know it's good. If you smell fishy smell, I wouldn't eat it, guys. Fishy smell is not for not for seafood. Yeah, that's just the bacteria on it. That's what gives it that fishy smell. So I'm going to take one bite out of this here. Oh, man. This is the, why, the reason why I buy it when it's cheap. I don't have anything to drink. <laughs> I suppose I could do some uh, wine or something, but uh, I don't know. Say, so I'm gonna enjoy some crab tonight. Now, if this were me and Doug having having a bunch of crab, because usually we do four legs, I'll probably go over there and take all of my legs out and get them out first. But since it's just me, I can do like a little piece at a time and stuff like that, you know. Because uh, truthfully, when we're doing it, uh, it's because we're trying to get ready to go play. And the longer that we take to eat, the uh, less time we have to play. So that's usually Friday nights. But tomorrow night, cooking some prime ribs. So Now for anybody who thinks that, you know, it's a big deal to cook crab legs... The only thing that's prohibiting really is the cost, truthfully. These things are delicious. 
They're super, super easy because they already come cooked for you. All you have to do is recook them. Personally, I enjoy baked a lot better than the other ways because you can boil them. You can, uh, and you can barbecue them, which actually I haven't tried yet, but... Great with the old babe. <laughs> and then, uh, of course, uh, you know, you can steam them too, which is the other method that I tried too, and that's pretty good. But I prefer these because they retain more of their natural juices that way and give you all that crab flavor. See, and if you're real lucky and you can do it real easy, get all that meat out of your cluster, just make sure you get all the ugly pieces out and any of that... Uh, any of that fatty stuff because yeah the fatty stuff doesn't taste really that great at least not in my opinion I'm not one of those crab sucker guys and by the way I did try and have somebody when I was in Dulles try and tell me that blue crabs were better than king crab I'm here to tell you guys that he's 100% completely wrong and you guys from Maryland and East Coast might disagree with me but there's nothing like a, an Alaskan king crab, or maybe a Norwegian king crab, you know, because I want to go to Norway just because I hear there, they're pests, and they're absolutely 100%, uh, you know, a nuisance, so they actually want you to go out and get them. A little bit of shell in there that I missed but they're the most delicious pests on planet earth guys now I think about it, I should have made some tea water so I can drink tea with this I've got matcha I'm totally giving away secrets with that fried rice, guys, because that fried rice recipe is so simple. Anybody can do it. And if you already have cooked rice, that's even better. If not, I'll show you uh, sometime down the road how to start fried rice by frying the rice, by actually frying it. Man, I can't believe how good king crab goes with fried rice. I'm glad I thought about that. I was just trying to do something to give me something else to eat besides the king crab legs. Because I'm a, yeah, I'm notorious for not eating when Heather's at work. And Heather will get mad at me if I don't eat because I have this tendency to, uh, to uh, just like lose all of my energy. Because I'm not eating. And that's when I know, but it's too late, you know. And the next step is I get super bad headaches from not eating. And it isn't because of, uh, it isn't because I don't want to eat. It's because I kind of lost the ability to say, hey, I'm hungry. And that uh, happened because of a story which I'll, uh, which I'll tell you in a little bit here. I'll give you a little story about me after I finish this first leg. And I know I've got 10 minutes on each segment, so I'm going to go ahead and hit this one here real quick and wash my hands before I touch it again. Alright, so I'm back, and I decided to uh, do a little guava nectar. I don't exactly have it stirred up right to drink along with this as we're getting the crab. And I did promise I was going to tell you a story, <laughs> and I'll get to that story here in a second here, right after I finish this leg off here still nice and warm like I said get all that fat off of there I have uh, over here I actually have some uh, crackers which I have not used tonight it's only because the crab shell has been very nice very nice test today ah that one had long I call them gills I know they're not gills because the gills are up above and you can't eat the gills but <laughs> you definitely don't want that cartilage it tastes horrible actually it crunches and look at that boom Bonus, we got the claw out. Or not the claw, but the... I mean the like Pincher. Sorry. Don't like the talking with my mouth full thing. 
I mean, it's okay if you can roll your food over, but just don't smack it, you know? And I'm impressed because usually I make a mess. Now these are not like the, the super colossal uh, crab legs. I might be able to pull this out this way. I'm going to see if I can open this up just a little bit. So I like having a utility fork. And boom! Winner, winner. Crab meat dinner, baby. <laughs> That's a good one. And in my tradition in my house is to save one of those for last. So we're going to save it for last. <laughs> and somehow I got some of the knuckle meat off right there. See, these, I've seen a lot of people do ASMR videos on these because they're nice and crackly. <laughs> fire up some neurons in anybody's head there <laughs> okay so um yeah the reason why i don't feel hungry anymore and i have to make sure that i eat dinner or heather gets mad at me is because uh back in the day i i didn't always you know wasn't always what i would consider you know i'm not exactly what you'd call well to do you know i'm not super rich i'm just really good at buying stuff and a discount and you know making good deals Which is why, why the crab tonight. But uh, when I was a kid growing up, going to college, now uh, this is a, a shout out to everybody who's going through the same thing that I did back then. You know, keep your chin up and keep fighting. Because someday you'll be eating crab just like me, hopefully. As long as you're not allergic to it. <laughs> anyway, uh, so during this time, yeah, I was not doing very well at all. Um, I was working at this place called Bud Brown's Barn uh, down in Phoenix. Shout out to those guys for keeping us alive. You know, the thing is, though, is that they could only keep us around uh, or have us on for a couple hours because they, they did parties was what it was. And it was, uh, it, was like, uh, it was like country western type music, which I'm not really big on. I've never really been big on it, but I, I was tolerating it because, I, one, I needed the job. And... And uh, then we do like chuck wagon style food, you know, line service for the food. They'd ring the dinner bell, come and get it, and everybody'd line up, and then we'd serve everybody. And then uh, at the end of the at the end of the day, we all got a meal too, which was one of the great benefits of the place. Sometimes we got to take food, or most of the time we got to take food home too that was left over from the party. Well, back in the day. We had me, myself, and a room, or I mean me, myself. We had me, my sister, and a roommate. And we barely could scrape rent together at times. This is before I got my first job at Cinnabon. And, uh, well, we had no money for food one month. I mean, literally no money. Uh... We ended up bringing in this chair from the outside. It was a nice chair, you know, and we needed an extra place to sit because we didn't have enough uh, chair, you know, room for everybody to sit down. Uh, so we brought in this chair that somebody was throwing out and found $10 worth of change in, in between the cushions. It was crazy because we heard it jingle when we set it down. And we were like, what? So we were looking, there was $10 and change. We used that $10 to buy some flour and uh, literally had potato soup, uh, flour and potatoes, and we literally had potato soup and biscuits all month long. For a whole entire month, that's all we ate was potato, potato soup and biscuits. 
Now, in the days when I worked at Bud Brown's Barn, I'd have the dish of food I'd come back, and I had to bike three miles down this canal to get to get back to my apartment. And uh, there were nights, you know, that I was absolutely balancing everything because I just did not want any, not even one drop of that food to get out because I knew when I got home, there'd be two hungry faces waiting at the door to see what kind of meat we'd be eating that week, you know. The one time I had swordfish, I have a very soft spot for swordfish because that tasted like the best meal I'd ever had in my whole entire life. It probably, Bud Brown's Barn probably saved our lives back then before. Before Cinnabon hired me and gave me more money than I, I could ever imagine when I was a kid. <laughs> I mean, I was making peanuts compared to today, but uh, but when I was a kid, it, it was more than I could imagine. I had more than enough money for rent, more than enough money to buy video games, buy CDs, buy anything I wanted. Except I never did buy a car, which is kind of funny. But it's because of that potato soup and biscuits uh, and that starvation period because there were times when I went to bed and I went to bed hungry, you know. It's like uh, kind of like the reason why I'm not big into rap, but I love the Tiny Tempers uh, song written in the stars because he has a part where he says, uh, yeah, have you been so hungry that it keeps you awake, you know. And I've, I've been so hungry that it's kept me awake before, you know. I remember there was one time my sister, my sister squirreled me away an extra biscuit because uh, she was able to make one extra one because there was a little bit extra flour that they, that they had, that she had in the bottom of the bag, you know. And she gave it to me because I was the one working at the time. I don't know whether it was because I was a brother or what, but, but thanks sis for that, I appreciate it. So anyway, I have all of my pieces here out waiting to eat, and I just got to finish off the rest of my food. So I'm going to call this one good. You guys got a good story from me, a real heartfelt from the bottom of me story. So so I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, go ahead and give me a like down below, you know. Share it with your friends, and if you're one of those people that are out there, you know, working hard to do your schooling and starving, man, just, just keep plugging away. That's what I say. Just keep fighting moment that you stop fighting, that's when life just beats you down and keeps you there. You don't want that to happen. Anyway, this is Death at Death Shop. <laughs> this is uh, cooked to death. Except for I didn't cook it to death, but, uh, you know. Yeah, that's what we call it. So, <laughs> Everybody have a great night. I'll catch you later. Thanks for watching, and I'm finishing this on my own. Bye.